told that Buick's new mission is providing relief to the underserved. Buick representatives on hand at the introductory drive event for the new Regal Tourx used the word repeatedly as they described their aim to sell vehicles in niches overlooked by other car makers, as if the brand now operates as something of a non-governmental relief organization. Who could have known that the Cascada is not just a convertible for warm weather rental fleets, but a charitable undertaking? Buick's latest vehicle for social justice is thus this off-roady looking all-wheel drive station wagon that wishes it were a Subaru Outback. It's not, the Regal Tourx has just 5.8 inches of ground clearance, compared with the Subaru's 8.7, so General Motors used plenty of tough-looking black cladding. And so you can't miss it, this plastic also extends high above the wheel wells, looking as pretentious on the Tourx as it is on the similarly dressed Audi A4 Railroad or Volvo V60 Cross Country. Buick reps point to the Audi as a competitor, except that the compact A4 is almost 10 inches shorter and a whole class smaller than the midsize, 196.3 inch Regal wagon. The Audi also is considerably more expensive, with the snob appeal inflated starting price in the mid dollar 40 comma 000 range compared to just $29,995 for the Buick. The single Tourx model available at that psychologically satisfying, sub dollar 30 comma 000 price has cloth seats and is available in any color you want as long as it's white, silver and black are extra cost options. Opting for the mid-range preferred trim to get a power driver's seat and an actual color palette sends the NSRP into the mid dollar 30 comma OOS, and if you want the top of the line essence, with leather and available advanced safety equipment such as lane keeping assist and automated emergency braking, the price is closer to $40,000. But the $29,995 Andy does put Buick at precisely the point on the value map to try to attract mainstream buyers, which gets at the root of Buick's underserved gambit. Wagons Roll Buick reps spun us a tale of woe, describing the plight of station wagon owners whose manufacturers have abandoned the segment. For lack of a proper replacement, these poor folk have thus been forced to hold on to their old cars much longer than they wanted to. We're imagining people descending on their Buick dealers who currently drive mid-90s vintage Honda Accord wagons with hopelessly rusted rear wheel arches and Toyota Camry wagons from the same era with rear suspensions that have collapsed, probably from the weight of that extra rear wiper. Perhaps trade-ins would include even a few Saab Sport Combis or Chevrolet Malibu Maxxes as well. We're not sure we buy into this any more than we imagine a scenario in which Buick steals customers from Audi. Yet the larger point is still valid, the Regal Tourx sits squarely between traditional European luxury wagons such as the Alroad and the aforementioned and more affordable Outback, which opens at just $26,810. The Tourx is powered by GM's familiar turbocharged 2.0-liter and line 4, an engine that appears in a number of GM products, including the current Malibu. The Malibu shares its architecture with the Europe market Opel Insignia, which is the basis for the Tourx and the new Regal Sportback. Here the Turbo 4 makes 250 horsepower and 295 pounds to foot of torque, fed through an 8-speed automatic transmission that can be manually shifted. On paper, this powertrain combination looks great, far outpacing Subaru's anemic naturally aspirated 2.5-liter 4 and even comparing favorably to its available 6-cylinder model, which also is a near $40k proposition. And of course, both of the Outback's engines are saddled with the continuously variable automatic transmission. In the real world, however, the Tourx feels sluggish, with the sleepy throttle calibration that requires pushing past mid-pedal stroke to wake up the turbocharger. Combine this with the transmission that shifts languidly, preferring to stay in the high gear and lug the engine, and it's easy to see why the sign-sourced gearbox is already slated for replacement at an unspecified future date with a GM-developed 9-speed unit. Buick made the same move in the La Cross sedan this year. The Tourx and La Cross have other similarities, such as firm and responsive brake pedals and a sophisticated all-wheel drive system, which is standard on the wagon. 
Buick uses two electronically controlled clutches at the rear, an arrangement that allows a single rear wheel with traction to move the vehicle even if the other three wheels are spinning. This is particularly useful in icy conditions and is in keeping with the character of the Tourx, in which all-wheel drive is intended more for conquering and clement weather than off-road trails. Our experience at the drive event in Sedona, Arizona, showed that soft suspension was capable of handling gravel roads at least as well as, say, a Toyota Camry. We mentioned the Camry not because it has the same ground clearance as the Turks, and not because it's the best-selling car in the United States, but because it represents what is perhaps the greatest challenge to Buick. Most mainstream brands offer everything that near luxury or premium ones do. Long Distance Comfort The interior of the Turx is a nice enough place, roomy and quiet and mostly pleasant save for the cramped middle rear seat. The front seats seem like sob leftovers, comfortable yet firm and ideal for the sorts of long highway slogs the Turx seems best suited for. Its dash is topped with a 7.0 or 8.0 inch touchscreen, with plastic designed to look like leather, or at least less hard plastic, and trimmed with requisite fake wood and shiny bits. Yet the Turx cabin is not really any nicer than that of a high zoot Camry, even in our test car, which was a fully loaded essence trim. At over $40,000, this wagon still had its cargo area lined with a sort of inexpensive carpet that is more appropriate for a rental car trunk, and its space hue didn't prevent it from being easily dirtied by the first load of suitcases we stowed. Still, the wagon's cargo hold is where the Turks best acquits itself. It is distributed differently than in an outback, with 33 cubic feet behind the rear seats, 3 cubic feet fewer than the Subaru, or 74 cubic feet with those seats folded, 1 cubic foot more than the outback. The folding seats, split 60-40 in the bass and preferred trims but 40-20-40 in the essence, lay almost perfectly flat, making it easier to load large items. For the mountain bike or kayaking crowd that doesn't need the Outback's ground clearance, the low height of a roof-mounted rack is as much a selling point as the Turks's available hands-free power lift gate. For those who want a bigger wagon rather than a crossover to transport their life's desires or detritus, the Turks is a welcome option and a reminder that sometimes it's okay for sporty to describe what you intend to do with a car, rather than the car itself. The question that only next year's sales numbers can answer is whether there is a market for this almost luxury, almost off-road or station wagon at an almost affordable price. If our experience in Sedona were to solely inform our answer, we'd have to respond in the affirmative. That place is swarming with both mountain bikers and old people driving slowly, the Regal Tourx seems designed to appeal to both. Buick, for its part, already is revising its sales estimates upward for the tour.